Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to assign properties to structural elements in the RAM Structural System Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to assign properties to structural members and walls to satisfy a variety of unique building configurations and to control the design properties for individual members. In this video, we will show you how to assign several parameters that can help you control the design of certain members in RAM structural system. These will include assigning the live load reduction parameters, some beam size restrictions, and bracing to steel beams. The first parameter we'll take a look at is live load reduction. Live load reduction parameters can be explicitly defined for beams, columns, or walls in the RAM modeler. By default, whenever you model a particular type of member, it will automatically use the calculated value for live load reduction, which is determined based on the tributary area and span direction of the slab or deck assigned. If you would like to limit or use a specific live load reduction value, you can also assign them to any beam, column, or wall in the model. For this exercise, we'll be assigning some live load reduction parameters to the concrete columns at the second floor level. The first thing we're going to do is select our concrete material from our material pull down menu. We're going to select the second floor layout, and then we're going to assign this to the concrete columns in the interior of the building structure. To do that, we'll go to our layout toolbar and click on our layout column icon. When we select that icon, we will see that we are allowed to assign some live load reduction parameters. We're going to be assigning these to standard base supported columns. And instead of use the calculated value, we will instruct, instruct the program to use the calculated value, but we're going to limit it to a maximum of 20%. Now please note that this is a limit for the maximum percent reduction. So actually by entering 20% here, it means that the live load will be multiplied by 0.8. After we enter our parameters, I'm going to go ahead and click on the fence button. And then I'm going to use my cursor to draw a fence around all of the interior columns along grid lines 2, 3, and 4. Now within the RAM modeler, I do have the ability to review a variety of design parameters right on my screen. And if I would like to review the results of that live load reduction parameter I just entered, I would go up to the top row of icons. I can use any of these to display different pieces of information. And I'm going to select the column show live load reduction icon. I can also increase the text size by clicking on the up arrow for text size and then I can review the assignment I just made. If I want to turn that back off, I could just deselect the Column Show Live Load Reduction tool. Next, you will learn how to assign size restrictions. In the RAM modeler, size restrictions can be imposed on gravity, steel beams, and steel joists. When the beams are designed in the RAM steel beam design module, the beams will be optimized using the size restriction. In this exercise, we will be assigning a size restriction to several steel beams on the third floor layout. The first thing we need to do is to select our appropriate material of steel and navigate up to the third floor layout. To assign a size restriction to beams, we will go to our layout toolbar and select our layout beam icon and then we will select our size restriction icon. In the steel beam size restriction mode, we are going to use this to set a restriction. And we can set a restriction based on a maximum depth, minimum depth, or also a minimum width, or a variety of these parameters. We're going to select the checkboxes for maximum and minimum depth. We're going to enter a maximum depth of 18 inches and a minimum depth of 14 inches. 
This tool may be especially useful if, say, you have a limited amount of ceiling space available, or if you know you need to leave some room for some mechanical equipment. After entering your parameters, I'm going to go ahead and click on the single button, and then basically I can select which members in the model I want to assign the size restriction to. And basically I can just click on each member. that needs that type of restriction. Now if you would like to review the effects of assigning that size restriction right on your screen, we're going to again return to the top row of icons to turn on and off different parameters, including we have an icon to turn on our size restrictions. Here I can see exactly which members were assigned a size restriction. And once I'm done reviewing that, I can again turn that information off. The last design property we will explore through this video is how to assign brace points to beams in the model. Now by default, whenever you have a girder, the top and bottom flange will be automatically considered braced when another beam frames into it, and the top flange will be considered braced when a joist frames into it. Now there may be times when there is going to be additional bracing detailed in your construction drawings, but those kind of pieces might not make it into your RAM structural system model. If you know the member is braced at a particular location, you can control the design by assigning additional brace points manually in the RAM modeler. For this exercise, we are going to be assigning some brace points to several members on the roof layout. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure my steel material is selected and navigate up to the roof level. I need to apply these brace points to beams, so in my layout toolbar I'm going to select my layout beam icon. Once I select this I can see all of that my tools available to assign properties to beams are now available and I'm going to go ahead and select the brace points icon. When I select this, I can see that user brace points can be manually added to any member in the model. We can decide whether or not this brace point is going to be detailed to brace the top flange or the bottom flange, and we can enter the location for it. For this exercise, I'm going to add a single brace point, and I'm going to enter it at a distance of 13.25 feet. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a single brace point. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add Single button. And then I'm going to select a particular member in my model. For this exercise, I'm going to select the steel beam along grid line C. And then I need to define which end to model that brace point that 13.25 feet away from. And I'm going to go ahead and click on grid intersection C4. And I can see that my user brace point has appeared. And I can do this for whichever members I know are going to be braced at certain locations. So I'm going to repeat this process and brace the member along grid line C between grid lines 1 and 2. Once I'm done with that process, I can go ahead and save the model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.